you guys welcome back to my channel today I have another food prep video for you guys you love when I film these so I figured I would go ahead and make another one but this time it is like the ultimate healthy food prep I decided to do six super healthy recipes that I think your whole family will love so all six of these recipes are really easy to pull together. I did them all in one day with two kids at home. So I think you guys can do this too. If you like these videos, don't forget to give them a thumbs up. Hit that little subscribe button if you want to see more content just like this. And let me know if you'd like to see more meal prep videos in the future. I know you guys really tend to like these videos, so I definitely wanted to share another one. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into today's video. For this first recipe, I'm going to be making some roasted chickpeas or garbanzo beans. They're super easy and delicious to make for a healthy snack. So I'm just starting off with one can of garbanzo beans and I'm just draining them off. No need to rinse them off, but just get them drained off really well so we get all of that moisture out. And then to get even more moisture out, you're gonna just lay them on a little towel here and get them all dried off so these are really gonna crisp up in the oven. Once those chickpeas are really well drained off and all dry, you're just gonna add them right back into the bowl and then you're gonna go ahead and season them up. So I'm just drizzling them with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. And then for seasonings, I did some garlic powder, some onion powder, some paprika, as well as a little bit of black pepper and then quite a bit of sea salt. And you're just gonna toss all of this together. Definitely go ahead and play around with the seasonings, but I really like this combination for these chickpeas. And then you're just going to place everything right onto a little baking sheet. This is a 9 by 13. I'm just putting a little bit more olive oil and spreading it around. And then I'm just going to be dumping the garbanzo beans right onto the baking sheet. The key here is you do want to make sure everything is really well spread out. You don't want a lot of the garbanzo beans touching because you want them to get really nice and crispy in the oven. Now you're going to bake these at 400 degrees for about 20 to 30 minutes. I put mine in for about 20 minutes and then at that 20 minute mark, I went ahead, mixed them all up just to make sure everything was really well distributed and all the sides were getting nice and toasted. And then I put them in for another 10 minutes. So I baked these for about 10 minutes total. You want them to be nice and crunchy and crispy. They're gonna be crispy just like a chip. Super great chip alternative if you have a little salty tooth like I do. And then to store these, I make sure they're really well cooled off and then I just pop them into a little Tupperware container and these honestly never last more than like a day and a half in our house because we love them. Next up, I'm going to be making some energy bites or energy balls as some people call them. These are incredibly simple to make. You literally need four ingredients. It could not get any more simple. So into my mixing bowl here, I'm just adding in one cup of creamy peanut butter with half a cup of honey. And then I'm just gonna get this mixed together before adding in the rest of my ingredients. So now that that is all mixed together really well, I'm adding in three cups of quick oats. I will say you do want to use quick oats for this recipe instead of using old fashioned oats. And then I'm also adding in about half a cup of the mini chocolate chips. You could also do raisins if you prefer, or you could even skip the chocolate and do like nuts or something if you want to be a little bit more healthier. But I did go ahead and do the chocolate chips this time. And then I'm just getting all of that mixed together really, really well until everything is nice and combined. So this mixture actually needs to be refrigerated for about 20 minutes or so. You just want everything to kind of firm up a little bit so it's not so sticky when you actually form the dough balls. So I'm just popping this into my fridge for the 20 minutes and then once those have passed, I am just going ahead and rolling these right into the little balls. I like to take my cookie dough scooper, scoop them up and then roll them from there. It just makes the process a lot easier. These are a great healthy snack option to keep in your fridge. They're even good 
for breakfast if I need something quick to grab this is a really good option and I don't actually want to like make oatmeal I can just grab one of these out of my fridge or a couple of them and it's a really really good snack or breakfast so if you like oatmeal I think you will like these or even oatmeal cookies really really good my toddler absolutely loves them my husband likes them I think this would go over really well in almost any household So this is what they end up looking like. They're super delicious and you can just store these in your fridge when you need a little snack. Next up, I'm making these carrot and zucchini muffins. I promise you they taste really good. I know they sound sketchy that there's lots of vegetables in them, but I promise you they're really, really delicious. I'm just starting off by getting all of the vegetables grated up. So you're gonna need about a cup of zucchini and then you're also going to need about half a cup of carrots. We actually have zucchini in our garden, so I've been trying to incorporate a ton of zucchini. So this was a great way to use some of it up. I really, really need to invest in a box grater. I think that would make this process so much easier. If you guys have any recommendations on one, definitely leave it for me down below because this one was from the Dollar Tree and it's just super old. It does not work very well and I could really use a new one. So now here you see that I am grating up the carrot. I only ended up using probably like a little over one carrot. So all you're going to need is a half a cup for the carrots. So I like to start off by getting all of my dry ingredients mixed up. So here I'm adding in half a cup of wheat flour as well as half a cup of regular flour. You use what you want to use, but then I'm adding in half a teaspoon of cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of just regular salt, as well as one teaspoon of baking powder, and I'm just gonna get all of that mixed together. So now I'm moving on to the wet ingredients. So in my bowl there, I just have one whole egg cracked and ready to go. And then I'm also adding in about half a cup of honey. You could also use pure maple syrup if that's what your family prefers, but we really did like the honey in this recipe. And then you're also going to be adding in right around a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I almost forgot to add this in, but you're also going to need about three tablespoons of butter. I just had it all melted and ready to go. You're also gonna to want to add this into your wet ingredients, and then you're actually just gonna add this right into your dry ingredients and get all of that mixed together. One thing that I will note with this recipe, or really any muffin recipe, is that you don't want to over mix. It's just a big no-no when it comes to making muffins. So just mix it until it is just combined. And now is the time where you want to add in your grated zucchini as well as your grated carrots. Just get all of that added in as well as half a cup of raisins. Again, you could probably use chocolate chips if you want, but we used raisins and we did really like it. My toddler loves raisins, so this was the perfect muffin recipe for him. Just get that mixed together. Again, don't over mix it just until it is all combined together. And then I'm just spraying my baking tin with a little bit of oil. And then I'm just spooning this batter right into my muffin pan. I would say I filled these about three quarters of the way filled and that was perfect. They did not overflow or anything like that. So I would say fill them up about three quarters of the way. And I was able to make nine muffins with this recipe. Thank you. 
You're gonna bake these in a 350 degree oven for right around like probably 30 minutes. The recipe that I was following said 15 to 20 minutes, but I did not do them in a mini muffin tin. I did them in a regular one and it definitely took a little bit longer. So I would say right around like 25, 30 minutes is what I did. So just make sure that they are fully cooked through. You can stick a toothpick in the center and they will come out nice and clean. These are also super freezer friendly. So if you would like to do that, that would be a great option for these, but our family gobbled them right up so there were none left for freezing. Next up, I'm going to be making some zucchini chips. They're super delicious. They have crusted parmesan on top and super, super delicious. So here I'm just getting all of my zucchini ready to go. So I had half of this zucchini left over from the other recipe and then I also had a second one here. So in total, I did about one and a half zucchini for this recipe. I'm just slicing them up pretty dang thin. The recipe said four to five millimeters. I honestly probably should have done them a little bit thinner because mine did not crisp up like they were supposed to. These were also a little bit larger zucchini so I think if you had smaller zucchini it would work out even better. So now into my bowl here with the zucchini, I'm just drizzling them with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. And then for seasonings, I'm layering them up with about half a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of fine sea salt, as well as black pepper to taste. And then I did also add in about a quarter teaspoon of paprika. And then I just got all of this mixed together. You want to make sure that it's really well combined and that all of the seasonings are completely covered on every single piece of zucchini. So now to prepare my baking sheet for the oven, I'm just spraying it with a little bit of olive oil. You could also line it with tin foil or parchment paper. You can do whatever you prefer, but I didn't really have a problem with these sticking or anything. So I just put them right onto the baking sheet and then I'm layering my zucchini right on there. You do want to make sure that they're not overlapping or anything like that, but just get all of these spread out on your baking sheet. And then I'm just taking some grated Parmesan and getting it sprinkled right on top of the zucchini. You can add a little bit more than I did or a little bit less. The recipe said to use two thirds of a cup, but do whatever you prefer. And then these are gonna go right into a 375 degree oven for right around like 20 to 30 minutes. I would say mine took about 30 minutes until the tops are all nice and golden brown. So like I said before, mine really did not crisp up like they were supposed to, but I will say these zucchini had so much flavor and they were still super, super delicious. So I would say try this recipe, but they may not end up crispy, but the flavor was right on point and really, really delicious zucchini. Next up, I'm making some freezer smoothie packs. These are great for a quick and easy breakfast. I just have all of my ingredients here. I have blueberries, raspberries, mango, a mixed berry medley, some avocado, frozen banana, a bag of minced fruit, strawberries, as well as some spinach. These are all the ingredients that I'm gonna use for these smoothie packs. So to store these in, I really like to use quart freezer Ziplocs but you can definitely use smaller bags if you want to make smaller smoothies, but I usually share mine with my toddler so I make them a little bit on the bigger side. So I'm starting off with a mixed berry blend here. So I'm adding in about three quarters of a cup of blueberries into each bag. For each of the flavors, I did two different bags, so I have two ready to go at any given time. And then I'm also adding in about half a cup of raspberries to each little baggie here. I did also add in a little bit of this mixed berry menly mix. You can skip that if you want though. I just had some that I had to use up. And then I'm also adding in half of a frozen banana to each little bag, as well as a couple of strawberries. And then I always like to add in some spinach to my smoothies. I actually usually add more than I did on this day, but it's all that I had on hand. So I just did maybe a good handful in each bag. And that is it for these smoothie packs. I just get all of the air out, seal them up, and then these are gonna go right into my freezer. 
And then of course, you're gonna want to actually make sure that you are labeling the bags so you know which type of smoothie you are grabbing out of your freezer when you actually go to make it. So the next smoothie that I'm going to be making is more of a tropical smoothie, or that's what I would call it. This is probably my personal favorite. So I'm just taking about a good handful of strawberries, probably about half a cup if you're actually measuring this out. And those are gonna go right into my two bags. And then I'm also adding in some mango. Again, I would say about half a cup of each one for this recipe. And then I'm also going to be adding in a little bit of this mixed fruit. This had pineapple, peaches, as well as some strawberries in it and I would also say I added about half a cup of that and then again I'm adding in half of a frozen banana to each bag and then I am also going to be adding in the same spinach that I added to the other one I always like to sneak in extra veggies where I can when I go to actually make these smoothies I just blend them up with water or you can also use juice if you want but I try and skip the extra sugar so I will usually use water or sometimes almond milk and then I also like to add in a little bit of of extra Greek yogurt for some creaminess but you can play around with this and add what you like to them sometimes they will also add in flaxseed or chia seed that's also a really really good option Another little tip here is to try and remember to write the names on the bag before you actually put the ingredients in. It's so much easier that way, so definitely try and remember to do that. Next up, we're gonna be making a strawberry raspberry smoothie. Again, one of my favorites. These are honestly all super, super delicious. I'm just adding in some strawberries here. Again, I would say right around half a cup. I did do a little bit more raspberries in this one, probably like three quarters of a cup because I was just using up the rest of that bag in there and then again I'm adding in some banana this time I did end up adding in one whole banana to each one just for a little bit of extra creaminess and then I'm also adding in spinach to one of the bags but then I ran out so that was all I had and I also like to add in some avocado sometimes it's great for a nice healthy fat and again it also adds some more creaminess to it so it's a really really great healthy option and that's it for these smoothie packs super easy and delicious, a great healthy option for a quick breakfast or a snack on the go. Next up, I'm actually making some pickled banana peppers. This recipe is honestly a little bit experimental. I've never actually made this particular one before, but I do have some experience with canning and I just kind of went based off of that. I had some banana peppers in my garden and I just didn't really know what to do with them, but I do love pickled banana peppers. So I figured this would be kind of fun to just play around and try this recipe out. So here I'm just cutting up four banana peppers. I did go ahead and seed them out of course they're all washed really well and then I'm just adding them into a little mason jar after they are all sliced up and ready to go I haven't actually tried these yet because they're still sitting in my fridge because you need to let them sit for at least a week before you actually try them, but I did want to share this recipe with you guys, so I decided to share it anyway. I did go ahead and add in some crushed red pepper flakes just for a little bit of extra spice. I didn't want them too spicy, but you can't miss that little kick of spice in there. And then into my saucepan here, I'm adding in three quarters of a cup of white vinegar as well as three quarters of a cup of water and then I'm also adding in two cloves of garlic I did have them sliced up so the flavor gets really nice and diffused in there and then I'm also adding in one teaspoon of sea salt in here and you're just gonna bring this all over to your stove and you're just gonna bring this to a boil let it boil for about a minute or so and then you're just gonna pour it right on top of your banana peppers and then you're just gonna seal this up with a lid pop it in your fridge for at least a week or up to two weeks would be even better and you're just gonna let it sit and that is it for this recipe all right guys that is going to wrap up this food prep video I really hope that you enjoyed it if you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up hit that little subscribe button and if you liked today's video let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see more videos just like this what your favorite recipe is that you are excited to try out but that is going to be it for today's video I will see you guys next time thanks so much for watching bye as a young girl, the fields were mine We played hide and seek for hours Raised our shadows among the pines So offshore, playful and free
get out of care.